Um, so we'll uh, make sure that you get a jammed uh, session here. Okay, so um, in the first five minutes of this webinar, we're going to talk about the key differences between the public and private systems in New York City. We're gonna talk about typical timelines, resources, and ideas to help you. And then I have some Q&A. Some of our community members have already submitted some questions that I'll be posting, but if you do have any questions, I've also opened up the chat, so you're welcome to post things in there. And I'm also going to open up the Q&A if you'd rather post something more anonymously, that's totally fine as well. So I'll hold that open until the end here. Okay. All right, so I get this all the time from my clients about these systems. I understand it's confusing because it's hard to really get assess sort of what are the differences between these systems. And I also hear from my clients that this feels out of their wheelhouse and it's overwhelming to try to figure out what these systems have in common and what they don't have in common. And some families will tell you we started in public and then we went to private and private was horrible, but we went to, you know, back to public and everybody seems to have an opinion, right? So I understand all that you might be feeling. So I want to just introduce myself. I'm a special educator. I've been working in New York City schools for over 25 years and I was was, uh, first started out as a public school teacher, went into private school work after that, and have been working with families privately in my own practice and then at Evolved Education Company for the past 15 so years. So I have acquired quite a bit of information over time that I'm so excited to share with you today. So we're going to talk again. This is sort of the roadmap of this webinar. So we've got differences in the systems. Then we're going to talk about typical timelines, ideas to support your process, as in your process of registering or, or applying, those kinds of things. Some resources that you can access. We'll have time for Q&A. Of course, I want to introduce you to my company and share with you how you can work with us. And of course, I want to also deliver your bonus at the end. So the differences in the system. So I want to just start here by sharing my philosophy, which is really just that as a parent of a school age child, I really want you to be empowered to monitor your child's academic development and to do that in any system that you're a part of. So part of my work is to empower parents to understand their children as learners as your child then fits into the system of education, right? And um, how you can best advocate for your child to learn well within that system. Um, so we have a public system here in New York City and it's quite large and you might've seen this site. Uh, this is sort of a picture of the website that is um, the DOE's website for New York City schools. And it, it contains the five boroughs of New York City. We have districts in New York City, which are larger areas of management. Um, in Manhattan, there are uh, many, many families that work with us are in District 2, which sort of goes from the Upper East Side down to Tribeca. Then you have District 3 on the Upper West Side. You have District 13 and 15 in Brooklyn, um, which are sort of Brooklyn Heights, Prospect uh, Park sort of area. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different districts in the city and things are changing rapidly in the city in terms of the organization of our schools and how we're going to be accessing different schools. So I'm excited to share some of those ideas with you. Um, but you should also know that for the elementary schools, we have zones and zones are very small areas that contain an elementary school and it is very difficult for families to gain access to schools that are not zoned elementary schools because the uh, DOE prioritizes those zoned schools. There is a lot of talk, I just wanna prepare you for going forward, um, the, where we're gonna be seeing zones happening for middle school and for high school as well. So um, I just wanna prepare you for some of those changes coming down the pipe. Um, so I just want you to know those different terminology, right? So we have, we have sort of boroughs, which are, you know, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Bronx, 
and then you have districts within the boroughs. So those are divided up into certain areas, larger areas. And then within the districts, you have zones and zones are smaller areas within a neighborhood. And right now you have zoned elementary schools. You may have zoned middle schools right now even. Um, there are no zoned high schools at the moment. Um, however, uh, and, and there may be one or two exceptions to that, but broadly there's not. And what you wanna know also is that likely we're changing that system in the next year or two. So there's a lot of changes happening in the public system. Um, the private system is contained, uh, you might hear different people using this word differently. So I just wanna define it a little bit. So we have independent schools in New York City. So these are run by this site. So you might see this site, which is the New York Association of Independent Schools. And uh, yet you also have parochial schools, which are part of the Archdiocese of New York Catholic schools, separate. Those are not the same as independent schools. You might also have Jewish day schools, uh, Ramaz, um, SAR, Heschel, things like that, um, which are uh, Jewish based. And then you might also have just private schools that are not part of the independent school network. So maybe a Montessori school or um, a school that maybe also is newer to the landscape and is working towards gaining membership in the independent school network. So you might, um, you know, just acquaint yourself with some of that terminology before, you know, you kind of get started with all this. So there are some major differences within the system that I want to cover with you. The first one being cost. So um, it might seem obvious, but it is something that parents need to consider. And a public school education is a free education. And yet I would say many of the schools do have a strong PTA, a parent association or, or a parent teacher association that raises money for the school to embellish its offerings for students. And so even though you might be in a public school, you might decide or choose, but it's optional to contribute to the school in that way. Um, the cost of a private school it depends. It, uh, if, if you're in an independent school, it could range anywhere from forty to sixty thousand dollars a year, and a parochial school may range from nine to about fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand at the high school level. So you're certainly getting some variation in the private school, but for most independent schools, you're seeing the numbers in the. 40 to 60,000, depending on the school. Um, the class size is also a difference. So private schools uh, do vary in this. So it is important for you to do your research there. But essentially in the public schools, you're seeing class sizes anywhere from 25 students to 32 students in a class. And then in the independent schools, you may see something between eight to 15 students in a class. So certainly one of the major differences that I notice families are kind of working towards um, understanding is just how their child's going to be able to learn within a larger class versus a smaller class setting. The communities are very different uh, in different schools. And I would say even in a public school setting, there, there are very different types of communities. And in the course that I teach on New York City schools, I talk uh, with families about reports that the DOE issues. And one of those really interesting reports is the comprehensive education plan of each public school. And in this document, the school itself defines its community, which is really, I think, quite helpful for families to understand how they how the school does define their community and it is also quite unique dif, you know depending on the school that you're looking at in the public system um, new york city public schools are very different i find as a advisor looking sort of outwardly in and i feel that there is certainly different leadership provided by principals there's different types of families and kids coming into each type of school. So there is a way to learn a little bit more about a public school community. 
Um, in terms of a private school community, this is a curated community. So there is an application process and the school is really looking for like-minded families who have the means to support that particular education. So it is definitely, I would say, more homogeneous in certain areas because of that defining factor of admissions. In public school, there is definitely a more heterogeneous grouping of students in some schools. It's still a very segregated system, so I wouldn't say that it's a utopian situation by any means. However, I would say you don't have the requirements of, of some kinds to get into the school that are placed in a very apparent way in the, in the private school system. Um, so certainly, again, getting into the culture and the socioeconomics of each system, there are also differences to consider. So it depends, again, I speak with parents about this all of the time, in that I want to just educate you about what's out there and what's possible, and then you as a family get to make a decision as to where you would like to educate your children and what you feel is really best for your family holistically. And any number of these these areas may come into play with your decision, right? Um, also, uh, curriculum. So curriculum is different depending, even, even really in between different public schools, even though we all follow Common Core, which is uh, the, the major curriculum and the next generation learning standards, we may see that a certain school is partnering with a college program which is delivering that curriculum such as teachers college or SRSD writing or connected math or math in the city so these are sort of you know curriculums that are developed by different collegiate programs that schools then bring into their public school for teachers to have professional development around and so you as you shop for schools if you will in the public system you might actually look at that CEP report and learn a little bit more about what they're investing in, in terms of their professional development and what kinds of programs the students are engaging in because that may be of importance to you as a family. In the private system, there's much more diversity of curriculum because there, there's no regulations from government agencies to dictate what that curriculum will be like, hence the independent school. And parochial schools will follow the archdiocese, so there are certain you know, requirements for them as part of that system. Um, and yet also Jewish day schools will do something similar. And so you will wanna learn a little bit more before you apply how the school is going to enact that, that learning process for your child. So you may see different terminology. So people will say this a lot to me and I find it's important to define what one means by these words, but you know, a very traditional curriculum, a very progressive curriculum, a very hands-on curriculum, project-based, test heavy. These are sort of words that we might throw around when we define a curriculum. And so if you hear words you don't know, <laughs> you might want to ask more about what does someone mean when they say this, right? I think in the days of, of COVID, we've actually become a little bit better in terms of schools have been putting more content on, our, on their websites. And so that's great. It's just that sometimes parents come to me and they're like, I don't really know what they mean by this. And do they really do what they say they're doing? And these are all really good questions to start investigating. Um, so facilities and resources are yet another way that, that schools are, our systems are different. So we have a, in the public system, different schools actually have different types of facilities. Some of them have very new buildings and massive gyms and, you know, auditoriums and things of that kind. And other schools are housed within very old buildings and it's important that you do take a walk and go look around at the buildings before you start placing schools on your applications because the environment I think is actually really important for kids and for you to feel comfortable within. So that's just another you know piece of school advice there but certainly uh, you know I would say the private schools 
uh, you're paying for a lot of those facilities because they're investing in them, they're building them, they're updating them, and each school will have their own look and feel. And I know during COVID times, it's so hard for families to get that real feel without walking through the building. So it is something we provide as as a little bit of show don't tell <laughs> uh, discussion, right? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely important. Um, the other thing I would say that's a difference is that, you know, your, your cutoffs are different. So public school cutoff is 1231 and private school cutoff tends to be like 830, 91 or sometimes 930. But most of the time, independent schools want children to be older. So if you have a child with a late summer birthday or a fall birthday, this could really impact your planning. So we use this, and I teach this in our in our course, but um, it's a you know worksheet that kind of helps you to plan out when you're doing what, especially at the early years. Um, I will say that birth dates matter more when the children are younger. If you're moving from the pub private system to the public system or vice versa later on, it's usually done by grade as opposed to age. But just know too that if you're going from a public school to a private school and you have a kid with a fall birthday, your child might be on the on the young side of their class. And you may want to talk with the school just more about what that, those social implications might be, right? So we anyway, when we plan with young families, we often talk about birth dates, right? So, you know, we list out all of these. And of course, if you have this birthday of late December, <laughs> you have a lot of more options to consider, which is, you know, I think a little fun. And my brain always has a hard time getting around that. So I, I totally understand. Um, so also typical timelines will vary in the system. So, you know, in public school, this is sort of a very um, over big macro view of the, of the timeline here because the DOE is often changing the exact open windows of time in which we're registering. It's not even COVID in which that's actually been, you know, moved around and announced and then they often uh, allow an extra week. It's like, oh, it's the deadline is the 19th, but actually you have another week. It's, it's sort of always like that. Um, and it's never first come first serve. It's always just, you know, registering on my schools. There's some technicalities and some strategy to some of this, but the DOE is by and large eliminating a good amount of the merit-based and the um, uh, the merit. Really, it's the merit-based based, based uh, strategies. I, unfortunately, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what your what what your thoughts on this are, but I I sort of um, you know they're going to go to zones, which has its whole host of other um, issues uh, in terms in terms of providing that segregation. But it's, um, anyway, we're gonna get there at, when we get there. But um, essentially what you wanna do here is you wanna go in at about three or four years old, you're applying for U pre-K if you would like to, they just cut a whole bunch of programs. So I think this is going to become more challenging to get placement within, but it's a program for kids who are four. Um, the fall of U pre-K is when you actually apply for K for kindergarten programs. And then you can do, you know, middle school and high school. In a private school, most of my families are coming to us when they're very, very young families. So I meet with an extraordinary number of uh, moms and dads with babies and and little little guys. And it's really so fun to do that because we do a lot of this this instruction, just private versus public. Like what, you know, where do you want to go? What you want to go to the suburbs eventually? Like what, you know, what do you want to, what do you think you want in a school? What do you want in the community? Um, oftentimes parents haven't really ever talked about these things and they get to talk about their past educational experiences and what they think is important. And it's a really great exercise actually. Um, but regardless, so we get to talk about all of that. And then, you know, there, if you're going through a route in which you know you're going for a top tier school in New York City, um, and yes, there are top tier schools and they're really competitive. <laughs> Um, and what you need to do is really be planned out. Your child needs to be prepared. You need to be prepared. Um, and, and really, this is kind of a lot of it. So I've written a book, which you can access on our website. It's free and it's wonderful. And it has a lot of great information in it. 
And it's really just about walking through 10 steps that I walk through with a lot of my clients. And it starts with you as a family. It starts with investigating your child as a learner and then going to the school wish list of things that you really want in your school. And this is the process that you have to go through. And it's, it's, it's time consuming. It's an investment. It's, uh, we're just finishing up my class from the fall and I don't think we've stopped. It's been, it's been one after another, after another, after another, just, you know, making sure a lot of these things are, are completed and done well. And, um, and we love doing it. So why not? Um, this is sort of middle school process. Uh, you know, families ask a lot of times, can I move from public to private in middle school? And is that harder to do than if, it, if I'm coming from kindergarten? Um, I think each opening actually has its own competitiveness that is actually worth investigating separate from each other. It's just a different emphasis of where your child's ev being evaluated. Your child's now being evaluated as, as a fifth grader. There's a test, a standardized test to take. There's um, an interview that they need to participate in. There's an interview you need to participate in. Um, there's an academic record that we need to submit. So there's, there's those components of the application. And in kindergarten, it's really your, um, your preschool, it's your training, it's your development as a young person that's being evaluated as well as your family, your family's connection to the school. So it's just different measures of entry point, really, depending on what you feel you want to invest in and what the benefit versus not benefit is. Some families of mine really want to go into the public school system and, and experience that system and give that system a go and then come out later on. And I think my philosophy is always about what whatever the family wants is what I support. And I want to educate and share what I know that will set them up for success. So it's never one size fits all ever. So here's a couple of ideas to support you. So I want you to learn about the landscapes. Think about your child. Don't just think about the landscapes. Oftentimes this is very, this is something I've seen in the industry happen a lot where we focus on the pragmatics of the admissions process only without ever really considering the family, the child. And this is where regrets start to happen. And I have, an, I have a philosophy here. I have it written right up there. It says no regrets process. I want every one of my clients to walk in and walk out saying, okay, I explored everything I needed to with my child in mind. I know what I'm getting into with this decision. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go forward with an education behind me. Um, some resources. So I wanted to say that is sort of how I see our company acting in your life. We are a resource for you. We have information to share with you. We will meet you wherever you are with that. So I have some clients who come in and man, they have it all done. They have all the schools researched. They have everything planned out. It's really wonderful. And then we just get to kind of, you know, verify or, or just strategize on top of that or answer smaller detailed questions. Um, and then I have other clients who come in and they're just, you know, busy. And this is just not, they outsource, like we cannot handle this. I, we don't want to learn it. <laughs> We don't want to know. Just kind of tell us where to go. Ask us the questions. Help us with all the things. Um, and I love that too. So whatever, wherever you are is totally fine with us. A um, couple of concepts you should know. We have a, all of this is actually in our membership, which I'll show, share with you at the end. But you know, we have a, we have developed a membership because I really wanted to give families a resource that was meaningful. I'm not seeing it out there. I find I wanted to give moms and dads quick, actionable resources and information. Um, and I'm, you know, a mama too, so I just don't have time to sift through thousands of articles and all of this. So one stop. If you want to go through the kindergarten process, watch these five videos and you're going to be kind of set up for your success of what you need to do. Call us when you need to, that sort of thing. But anyway, all of these links and resources are included in there, including like the zone maps, how to read the CEP reports, 
Public School Review is a website. You can access public schools on there if you want. Inside schools, I mean, I use it all the time. I, I use it for certain things. I teach in the course what I do use it for, what I want you to know about it. Again, it's being, it, it's having an understanding of the information where it's coming from as well. So I always advise with a multiple perspective viewpoint and I'm always learning. So I like to share with my families multiple perspectives, not just one perspective. And I actually also encourage them to go outside of our consultation and continue to dialogue and investigate further. Um, because uh, no one viewpoint is actually enough when you're talking about your child's education. Um, private school resources. So these are different resources that I use in research. And again, I talk about a lot of this in the course. Um, we do boarding school Northeast as well. So we have relationships with um, all of the schools really in the Northeast. And we do a great job of locating programs that really are best fit for your child in terms of everything like sports or learning needs or you know community size of school commute anything and everything really um it's important to me that you understand and just know that we're coming from a place of partnership with you and we want to make sure you're supported in your journey of learning about schools and learning about your child um, it is always important to me that you that you have you know the resource that we that we uh, provide here as you go along in your journey. So if you would like to work with us, um, this is how you can do that. Uh, we offer one-to-one -one consultations. Um, we set, we spend time with you before that because we want to organize your time to make sure it's really efficient. So all your questions get written down. We have really nice uh, follow-up with links and all the things that we end up discussing in our hour. So you're really set up with an additional layer of information that you can take with you. We offer comprehensive packages, supporting families through the whole process, like I told you before. Like you can think of us as your assistant through the process and just hire us for those kinds of things. Um, everything is really high level and confidential and very, I would say, um, you know, service minded is really kind of important uh, as we as we set the tone. Um, Couple of questions. I'm just going to get into these because I think it's it's important. We'll go over a couple of minutes in case you have that time. Can I start in public school and move to private school later on? Um, yes, definitely you can. There's always a way to do everything in my land. So it just depends on what you're going to be comfortable with and how I think you should know about the steps that you're going to need to take because your child's transcript and their experience in their current school is going to affect their opportunities next. So you'll wanna know what those measures and data points are so you can keep an eye on them and just monitor before you get to that process. The more informed you are and the more educated you are through the process, the better you will be in terms of making any transitions. It's the same for college really. It's just that in New York, we start early. <laughs> Um, I can't afford 50 to 60 K for private school. Are there alternatives or financial aid? Absolutely. Um, you know, it depends on your circumstance. I will certainly share everything that we know about financial aid. I will also share with you. We have a whole list of schools that are not part of the 50 to 60 K network. And we share that with the families who put that on their wish list. And we talk about those schools and the positives and negatives of them. Um, or, or negatives to the family, by the way, I don't, I don't really view negatives in a negative or a black and white category. I view it as a match to the family's uh, wish list. So if your wish list is to have something and a school doesn't have it, that would be a negative as opposed to just a categorical ne negative. Um, so there is a way to do this, yes. Um, how do you get into the most competitive schools? Um, with a very, very serious plan and also a child who is ready and is a match for that particular school first and foremost. So your child needs to be ready and your child needs to be a match for the school's entrance points. And you as a family also just have to have all of your ducks in a row in terms of that application to present the very best foot forward you possibly can because it is 
very competitive still in COVID days. Parents ask me all the time, like, have every, has everyone left the city? No, they have not. <laughs> it's been very, very, uh, you know, equally busy, right? Let's just say. So you um, need to be planned out and you need to, you know, definitely put in the, the investment to get there if that's your goal. Yeah. Um, so just to end here, and again, thank you for joining me this morning. And if you're watching the tape, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is coming to you on February 15th. If you're interested, we have a New York City Schools membership going, uh, which is going, which is my new baby. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just all the knowledge. Honestly, it's just to help every family with public and private. So there are videos on twos programs, how to get into a twos program. What are the twos programs? Um, we mostly concentrate on Manhattan and Brooklyn. So to be clear, even though it says New York City, um, I want to be very transparent in what we're at, what we're offering. So please know that is sort of our regional expertise. Um, in addition, we have public and private processes available. So you can learn about how to get into public kindergarten, middle school, and high school. Those will be updated every year. Uh, private school admissions is also on their interview prep videos, um, you know, how to write an essay, how to, uh, you know, sign up on Ravenna, <laughs> all the things that I have to teach everybody how to do. So if you want to learn on your own, um, if you're an educator and you're interested in learning more about this too, that's a great, this is a great way to do that. So I hope that you do stay in touch with us. I hope if you want to join our waitlist, you can email Stephanie, um, who works with our clients on the intake process. And here's her email. Thank you so much for coming this morning. I hope you learned and I hope you uh, enjoyed the experience that you had today. Talk to you soon. Oh, Valina, I'm going to pause there. I see your question. Sorry. Hang on one sec. Um...